Welcome. As some of you might be aware, Protocols.io was recently acquired by Springer Nature. And as a result, we have now more resources. We have now more software engineers, more developers, and we have been able to implement some of the things that users like you and others have been requesting. In this opportunity, I cannot tell you about every single development, every single thing that is new in the last year or so. But I have selected some important improvements that based on our experience, we think they might be helpful for your work. So we want to demonstrate some of this new functionality for you so you know where to find these features. And that is why this is a new second advanced webinar. As such, I will be not covering uh, some of the basic features of protocols.io, and I will be assuming some knowledge about the platform. But before we begin, I would like to acknowledge that our main office is located in Berkeley, California, the ancestral and unceded land of the Ohlone people. And we recognize that we have benefited from the use and occupation of this land. Consistent with our values of diversity, equity, and inclusion, we have a responsibility to acknowledge this fact. We also recognize that the Ohlone people are alive and flourishing members of the Berkeley and the broader Bay Area communities today. So all of my presentation will be a live demo. So I don't really have a slides to share, but as I mentioned at the beginning, the presentation is being recorded and the recording will be shared with all participants. As you might recall, in previous webinars, specifically in the introduction, we have touched on the run functionality. Now there are major improvements that I would like to go over. The task manager is related to the ability to run protocols. And it is now a collaborative calendar view that should help with distributing work between different members of a team. Protocols experiments, you know, are sometimes not done by a single person, but by several people. Or if someone goes on vacation or is sick and hands over the work to the person after them to finish. So there are improvements to running and the task manager that help with this teamwork. We have also made improvements to the use of Excel files and multi-well components in protocols.io. And the last part will be a Q&A session for us to discuss what I have presented. But before we jump in, just some housekeeping information. As I have mentioned, I am recording the presentation and I will share the recording with all participants. Also, closed captioning has been enabled, so feel free to turn it on if you want to use it. I will speak for just 20 to 25 minutes, leaving at the end some time for questions, but you can start typing those questions right away as soon as they come in the Q&A window or in the chat of Zoom. In case you are not an advanced user, I want to point out that the platform is really intuitive. And the best way to familiarize yourself with the many different tools and functionality is just to log in and play around. However, we also have a series of resources that you can browse for more information. These resources can be found in the URLs at the bottom of the slide. So we have a series of regularly scheduled webinars that include once a month an introductory one. 
at the bottom most URL in this slide, if you follow that link, it will take you to a page where you can request at any moment and for free a one-to-one -one demo. But let's begin now with the presentation. So I'm going to take you to my own personal account in protocols.io, which is what you see now in the screen. Just to orient ourselves to the right, to the left, sorry, where I'm scrolling, you can see the many workspaces, these collaborative units that allow you to develop protocols in collaboration to organize them, preserve them, and share them. Each workspace has a different folder that contains different subfolders and protocols. But let's go back to my own personal workspace. As you can see, I have organized my file manager with many subfolders, and I have some loose protocols over here. Specifically, we're going to be working in a folder that I created just for this demo today. So I'm going to open one of these mock protocols. You might recall that every single private and public protocol comes with a run button that allows you to follow the protocol as you perform an experiment. Now, we have made some improvements to the run functionality that allow you to collaborative run an experiment in protocols.io. Specifically, this protocol is meant to be performed in two days. So I can decide to run the protocol. I'm going to click the Run button. And I will start the run after I select in what folder the run record of that experiment will be saved. So as you see, there are two sections of the protocol, one for day one, one for day two. And you know that in the past, as you perform the experiment, you can mark each step as done. When I finish with day two, I can now hand it over to the following person to complete the protocol. So in the platform, I can share the run the same way that we can share protocols. Now you can also share runs. So I can share the run with a colleague I add my colleague to the run and allow editing so he can come back the next day and finish the protocol. I save the changes. And now my colleague Alberto has been added to the run. If I go back to the file manager, I will see that a new run record has been created. When a run record is finalized, you will see <coughs> that the logo changes to green, the partial run records are gray. If I were the one with whom the run record was shared, I can then later on resume the protocol. So my colleague has received a notification that will allow him to come, click resume, and finalize the protocol on the following day. If I open a protocol that has been finalized and has been collaboratively developed, so I can click the View button. And in the history, I can see who did what steps and when. So this is a protocol that was developed, that was run by me and by my colleague on September 6th and September the 7th. So this might seem a minor change, but it actually required a lot of developing work because the logic of the run had to be changed. The task manager is an extension on this collaborative running of protocols. It is a functionality that allows you to distribute work among members of a team. Every workspace comes 
with a task that I can select and I can move. And you have a list or a calendar view of all the tasks that you are developing and running. For the month of October, I just have one task that is already closed. To create a task, you can just select create a new task or you can double click on the calendar. We can add a title to this task, which is gonna contain today's date. You can add a description to the tag. This is an open task. And let's say that this is a task that is gonna to start tomorrow on the 22nd. It's a task that is gonna last two days and I can also add a due date. And I can start assigning colleagues to this task. So I can invite my colleague Lenny to join this task as well as my colleague Alberto. I can also add protocols to the task, but I will show that in a little bit, not right now. I can save the task. And now if I go back, I can see that I created a task which is open. I can list the task and see the tasks that are open, the colleagues participating in that task, the task that is in progress, and the tasks that are closed. And I can view the list, the calendar view, and just see the tasks that are open. I can reopen my task. And I can now start adding protocols to that, to that task. Let's say I'm going to use in this task the protocol that is a two-day protocol. So I can start searching protocols. And you might recall that this is a two-day protocol. Steps one to four are done, performed on day one, and the steps five to 21 are performed on day two. So I can start adding assignees to this specific protocol. So let's say that I'm gonna ask Alberto to run steps one to four, and then Lenny, is gonna finish the protocol on the following day from steps five to 21. So I had distributed, I have distributed the protocol between my two colleagues. Every action that I take and when they are assigned to the protocol, they will receive a notification. So they can log in, come, they can open the protocol and start performing the, the experiment whenever it was scheduled. Tomorrow, we can change the status as in progress. And if I go back to the calendar view, I will see that if I select the protocols in progress, I will see this protocol that will start tomorrow. If I select all again, I will see the one that was closed last week and the one that will be in progress starting tomorrow. So now you can collaboratively run a protocol between two or more people, and you can also design tasks for your team to develop not only one, but more than one protocol in a specific task. These are all the topics that I want to cover regarding the collaborative run of protocols and the task manager. Now let's go and discuss two new features of the editor.
Again, I'm going to take you to my own personal account. This is the folder that I created. And the two new features of the editors that I want to show are an improved functionality to display Excel attachments and a new functionality for you to create multi-well plates. I'm going to open a protocol that I created in advance. I'm going to start a new section that is going to be called Excel file. And I'm going to create a new section, a second section that is called multi well plate. And this is how the protocol looks like. Two sections. I go back to the editor by selecting the edit button. Now I'm going to stop sharing my screen momentarily so I can open my hard drive. Now, you should be able to see both the protocol that we are developing together and my hard drive. And I have an Excel file here that I want to insert in my protocol. This could be an Excel file that contains buffer formulas or inputs. The easiest way is I just take my file and I can drag it to the step in which I want it to be inserted. Now, a new functionality that we created is that now, previously, you could only, if you, wanted to, if you wanted to see that Excel file, you had to download it. Now, you can automatically preview the Excel file right away. And it, this works from the editor, it works from the viewer, and it also works from the wrong functionality. So if the Excel file contains instructions, you can view that while you are running your protocol as well. The second functionality that I want to show is a multi-well plate. This functionality was developed in response to recommendations from our users. You might be aware that at the bottom of the components, there is a link for you to request one if you think that one, a new one might be useful for your research. But let's focus on the multi-way component. I can insert now a multi well plate. You can select from some popular formats, or you can create your own. But if I select, let's say a 24 well plate, I can create it. I can select patterns of coloring. I can select this striped pattern. I can select the colors. And now the well plate has been colored. 
I can change the color of each well individually. And I can add labels. I just added a second step to this section. You can also import well played content from a pre-created well played in Excel. So I have a 12 well played Excel file created here that if I open it, you will see the content. I can import that directly so I create again a multi well plate. I can import the Excel file. And now it has been imported from Excel. Again, now I can change the coloring. And I can now change one by one the coloring of each um, well. And this is how the protocol with, will look like. So this is all that I have prepared for today. Some of it, as I mentioned before, is easy and quick to show, but it actually entailed a lot of development work from part of our engineers. I hope that you find this functionality helpful in your research, and I will be happy to take any questions. So Grigor asks if we can connect a protocol to LIMS. I, um, I will have to, to be honest, I don't know what LIMS is. So Grigor, if you can explain uh, a little bit more, I can probably elaborate as well. So what I can tell you now is that we have integrations. Oh, so we don't directly integrate with LIMS. We integrate with some ELNs, but we have an open API. So if you are a developer, you can access our API and then you can integrate protocols.io to any other system that has an API as well. But we do not integrate with LIMS by default. Let me share my screen again.
So if I go back to my workspace and I go to the my folder, you will see that you can take any folder, any protocol or any run record. I have some run records here, but you can take any protocol and you can export it as JSON or as PDF to, we integrate with Lab Archives, which is at ELN, as well as you can add some apps, mostly drives like Dropbox or OneDrive. But most importantly, we have an open API. So you can integrate protocol.io with your preferred system if you are a developer. Are there any other questions? So the question that Grigor asks is whether I can store results in the Excel file. And if yes, does it create copies of the protocol after each run? You cannot directly modify an Excel file during a run. If you upload an Excel file for it to be completed during the run, you will have to download the Excel file modify it and then re-upload it. So let, let me show you an example. Let's say that I run this protocol that has an Excel file that needs to be filled during the run. So there are a few options. So you will have to download the file. Then you can open it in your hard drive. During the run, you can now replace it. I can delete the original one. I can open my hard drive. and I can insert the Excel file that has been modified. I replace it. Alternatively, you can insert it as a comment as well. But that, and I have to be very clear, that doesn't modify the original protocol. That only modifies the run. Once I enter my values, sorry, I didn't save it. I'm gonna reopen it. I post the comment. Now the new Excel file is either in the, either in the comment here or in the step itself. And when I finish my run, those will be saved. So if I go back to my file manager, this is the protocol that we just run. This is the record. And the Excel file has been uploaded in the step itself and in the comment section. But you cannot do it directly on the protocol. 
Alternatively, we have a way for you to create actionable tables during a run or for a run. So you can create actionable tables for a run. And that is called the smart component. So I'm going to open that protocol. It is called the Excel protocol. I'm going to open the protocol. I'm going to add a new section that is called actionable table. And I'm going to insert here a component that is called the smart component. The component looks like a table. Let's suppose that I am performing an experiment, which is about counting dead cells in a microscope field. So one entry is going to be total number of cells. The second entry is going to be dead cells. Both entries are required. I can add the component. It looks like a table. And it says here that the smart component allows you to create a key value table that will appear to be filled out during the run. Now, if I run my protocol, I can mark each step as done. And when I reach the smart component, I cannot finalize my protocol unless I enter the values that were required. Now I can save it and those values will be saved in the run. I have finished the run. I can come back to the file manager, see the run that has been finalized. I can open it and I can see that the values were saved in the table. I hope to have answered your question, Grigor. Another question that he has is that before, there was not enough flexibility how the printout of a protocol looked like. If I want to export a protocol now, I can select the protocol that I want to export. I export it as a PDF to my computer and I have several options. I can import a compact view, materials only, only commands or only steps. So you can select a few uh, modalities in which you can import your protocol. So it could, we, you can export your protocol as a PDF to be printed. Let me know, Grigor, if I answer your questions. So let's see, I'm going to reopen the protocol because now let's see how the compact view looks like. So again, this is the protocol. And if I decide to export it as a PDF to my computer, if I, this is the not compact view. And this is the compact view. So it is just a slightly modified some of the white space between the steps is removed, but it is not extremely compact. We are working on creating a really compact view. This is the non-compact view, and this is the compact view. 
you will see the difference is, is relatively small. Non-compact and compact. Any other questions? And thank you so much for your engagement. You can see my email address on the screen. So in the future, if you have questions, please reach out to me. I'm gonna stop the recording in case somebody wants to ask a question of the record.